Good morning from Savannah Cat in Laos. And uh, we're out here for a morning walk. So let's have a look around together. All right, so a beautiful morning here, early morning in the French colonial old quarter of Savannah which is in south central Laos. There's a lot of beautiful old buildings here. And the first time I came here was 11 years ago. In that time, there were no new buildings. Everything was old, basically from the French times or from the communist times after that. And uh, there's been a lot of changes in Savannah Cat. There's a lot of new buildings, a lot of new things. And we'll have a bit of a look around, mostly focusing on the old stuff. But we'll see some of the changes as well. So the most interesting change is that the river bank, which was just basically made from dirt, uh, has been totally developed now. There's a really great promenade along the river, really nice footpath there with trees and grass and an embankment. Um, they put big like stones going down to the river to make like a river wall. It looks really great. It's fantastic for walking along. All right, so the river is down this way. And the sun looks amazing coming up this morning. I don't know if you can see it with the pollution effect there. It makes a beautiful orange color. goes really well with the monk's robes there. Isn't that lovely? Eh? But yeah, there's changes happening, construction happening in Savannah Cat. There's still this beautiful core of old buildings. Street art is a new thing now in Savannah Cat, as we see in some other places in the region that you might have seen with me or Otherwise, like uh, Penang in Malaysia, for example. So street art is, has arrived in Savannah Cat. Street art starting to really take off. Yeah, the dogs in Savannah Cat seem to be okay at this time, but in the nighttime, they're pretty wild. This is a, one of the few kind of semi-dirt roads in the direct center still. Mostly everything's paved over now. The temple you just saw down the end of the road is an interesting one. When you're in the town on a quiet afternoon, it can be an interesting place to sit. And here we come up to the mighty Mekong River. the new river walk promenade. It's really lovely. It was just dry, dusty dirt before with millions of flies buzzing around. And the building just obscured by the trees there, the big building that's the old um, immigration building ferry terminal for crossing the river here to the other side 
And on the other side is Thailand. The Thai city of Mukdahan. I've been told that the ferry boat which ran from this building across the river to Mukdahan has not run since uh, COVID came along. Uh, that's all finished now and apparently the ferry hasn't resumed so far. It'd be nice if they started it up again. So you can see from the embankment that's been built there is pretty sturdy with all these rocks. Before these rocks were not here, this was just all barren dirt, basically from the edge of the ferry building there, coming down, slipping down. The bottom part was a bit flat actually, down here there was a flat area all the way along the river, which was farmed. A lot of local people were growing some bits and pieces down there, different kinds of food. It's a beautiful river, the Mekong River, one of the great classic rivers of the world. Mukdahan's a decent town, I can say. At night time here, you can see the lights across the river. It's quite lovely. It's a lot nicer now with this river walk, I can tell you. Well, they still fly the communist flag here, alongside the national flag of Laos. As I was saying about the riverboat crossing here, it's discontinued. Further down, I don't know if you can see it in the distance, there's the second friendship bridge between Thailand and Laos. That's been open for oh, quite a while now, and that's how foreigners have to travel across the border here at this part. So, yeah, this promenade's a game changer. Really, in the past, you didn't see locals even dressed like this doing these kinds of things, it was much more traditional looking. In the morning you just saw locals out setting up their cooking stuff and doing whatever. But yeah, this river walks really kind of um, modernized the town a bit in, in the way people do things with people out getting a bit of exercise and so on. Okay, this is a new kind of uh, cafe, bar, restaurant place here. Looks kind of cool, good place to sit. I was sitting up on the top there the other night. We will not walk along the whole river walk. It's kind of similar all the way along, but it's really nice. Let's head into the old town again. Hello, good morning. And this road is the one that goes right into the center of the place, to the central square just ahead of us. This is, a, this is really, I would say, the heart of the whole thing, really. Of course, in the past, people would have gotten off the boat just back behind us there, come right up this street into the main square. This is the hub of the whole thing. Lots of beautiful crumbling brilliance here. This place on the corner was the only 
decent kind of cafe when I first came here 11 years ago, but it's, I don't know if it's still run by the same people or not, it looks a bit different, I'm not sure. There were no places with air conditioning inside 11 years ago, no cafes, no restaurants with air conditioning, no 7-Elevens or convenience shops or supermarkets. I think this one's an old movie theater, if I'm right, I'm not sure. Yeah, but uh, this is the main square. The French architectural influence is really so classic. But you see, it's a main square, it still has a lot of old stuff going on. It's like bags of charcoal there for sale. And it's amazing in the early morning, it's nice and cool out still. Later it's going to be scorching hot. And there's some nice side streets that go up the square, filled with old buildings as well. Last time I came here they had a food market set up in this square and it was very nice. But that seems to have been stopped. That was... Oh, I've been here about six times over 11 years. But uh, yeah, that food market seems to have been a, just a short-term thing. They built a new food market down by the river. It's really nice. Um, maybe we'll have to walk past there later, or maybe not. Um, I'm not sure, but basically they've built some kind of interesting looking brick walls that make a courtyard. And there's some old buildings on two sides of the area overlooking that um, are kind of abandoned looking and makes it look really cool and atmospheric. I mean look at this, this empty piece of land here with this like bit of broken wall right on the main square not being used basically. Unbelievable isn't it? This town still has so much potential, but I can say it's hit, it's hit a certain thing at the moment where it's starting to take off. Now it's going to be the big challenge um, as to whether the local authorities can uh, develop this place with good taste. This is a really nice cafe with air conditioning, by the way. It's going to be good to know though for anyone who might be coming along this way. Yeah, the big challenge really is not to stuff it up, not to destroy the beauty. The old French church here. It's a nice one. Right, we will just make a little detour over this way. Yeah, so for example in Vientiane, the capital of Laos. It's similar in some ways. It has a central area of old French buildings. Very charming. Um, it seems like the government leaves it up to private entrepreneurs to do up their buildings, renovate their buildings or not, as the case may be. And uh, as you can imagine, some people decide they'd rather knock down the buildings and build some kind of ugly looking shop made from modern materials which is which is the kind of thing that just destroys the whole potential of the place if you want tourism you have to take care of these kinds of places obviously you have to keep as many old buildings as possible I mean, this one's been done up really well, as has this one, obviously, so, and this one, and that's what you need. 
but the government has to make some rules, some kind of incentivization to promote people to uh, actually fix up these places to retain the heritage. So whether that's with some kind of subsidies or whatever, yeah, some kind of tax breaks, I don't know. I would think even it would be worth at least giving some kind of grants to people. I see here some of these old buildings are really falling down to the point that maybe it wouldn't be possible to save them. As I said earlier, street art is taking off here a bit. See what I mean about some places that need a bit of TLC. cinema a very very long time ago I don't know if they actually showed films there in the communist times it might have been just used before those times back in the French times I'm not sure okay we'll cross back over through the square here where we walked up before. Yeah, so basically this area around this square is the best part, but um, this town is growing really fast. And there's, there's a sprinkling of some really nice French villas and other kinds of cool old buildings as you go into the streets that radiate out from here. There was quite a bit of empty land around uh, the fringes of the town and especially on the road heading to the bridge that goes to Thailand there was a lot of farmland not much empty land along there now it's like on one side of the street it's completely filled in with buildings on the other side it's uh, almost filled in Sam Law.
I'll never forget the night I first came here. I took a bus that was heading further south. Um, actually came into town with a pretty girl I met in Vientiane and um, got off the bus at a crossroads up, I think it's about 15 kilometers out from the town here where the road from the town joins the main highway going north-south and then from there we were like quite shocked to find out we had to find another way to get onto this place away from this like little town at the crossroads and we found a motorcycle taxi and or yeah something like that a tuk tuk maybe which uh, brought us to outside the bus station and there was nothing there happening at all it was completely dark just maybe one light on the corner outside the bus station no signs of life at all nothing not a sound all dark and the guy dropped us off or I think he stopped there actually maybe he stopped there to try to find out where we wanted to go from there I think that's what happened so we we're there for a minute or two and then there was a, a book I had with a guest house name written in there and then uh, we went through the roads a bit further along and he found the place and managed to wake up someone and we managed to get in there that was pretty cool but the whole town was just like totally just old style everything old not one new building at all really amazing in that time so you can still see there's a lot of that but it's changing fast really this street we're coming out onto now is the one that's kind of the main commercial street running through the town down at the far end down there is the bus station and the road which goes past the Thailand consulate where a lot of people come in from Thailand to get visas to go back into Thailand and then the friendship bridge is further down that way But along this road you find a lot of the shops and there's a lot of modern shops once you go a couple blocks down. Here's yummy sandwiches, which you should always have for breakfast, yeah? Yum yum. <laughs> the gentleman has good taste. <laughs> Same kind of thing you find in Vietnam, but slightly different, I think. I think I'm going to have to grab a couple of those. Just zigzag. I just zigzagged back through the old town and just wanted to head down towards this temple here and back towards the river for a minute. This place on the left, you see, it's a really old, really grand French villa on the riverside. This was the only real foreigner type of bar for the longest time it seems to have gone out of business very sad but yeah this was the only place for foreigners this kind of naga dragon type 
statue sculpture thing. This is new. Okay, so we've come out a bit further down the river side here. A bit further down from where I was before. Yeah, so this is a new thing. Pretty cool. Good afternoon and it's my last day in Savannah Cat. Let's have a little look before I split the scene here. Alright, a bit more street art here. Even these kind of buildings are kind of uh, pretty cool, really. You know, 1960s, I would say. 1960s style. Heading back down towards the river. Just having a little wander about before I head on out of here. So... Coming on up on the river here. And on the right, this used to be the Thai consulate where people would come to get visas to go to Thailand. A lot of people who like to hang out in Thailand long term would come in here to get their visa. It was a really nice spot, actually. Near the river with the breeze, with some shady trees. Yeah, it was a good spot. I came here a few times about 11 years ago to get visas, tourist visas for Thailand. It was all very all kind of civilized. And uh, yeah, after a couple years, they moved the consulate out on the edge of town more towards the Friendship Bridge area where it remains today which is definitely less convenient and uh, they have people dropping off their paperwork in the morning and then have people picking up visas in the afternoon it's a shame it, they didn't it's a shame they didn't have it the other way around really because it makes it very hard to get further along in the same day and it also makes it hard if you're trying to hurry across the river from Thailand to get into Laos and then um, yeah basically make it on time to put in application but okay they suit themselves they do things how they want to do There's no point crying about it, eh? There's no point crying about it. Hello! Hello, don't worry. It's alright. It's alright. It's gonna be alright. 
Everything gonna be alright, little baby. Hello. It's okay. We will not cry too much about it. Let's be let's be happy for what we have and uh, keep on keeping on. Yeah. So lots of new buildings. This one and the next one and looks like a few more down there as well. So they've been busy in the COVID time. They have not been resting too much. This is how it looked along the riverbank. They had a bit of farming all along. Basically all the way through the downtown, it was like that. I don't remember this wall being here either. Some of these buildings are old French villas that have been done up. And here's one on the corner that hasn't been done up and it looks in danger of falling down if someone doesn't save it soon, which is really sad. It's a real classic one. All right, so I'm down by this pretty cool park by the riverside here. This is an old park. This was here when I first came through this way and there is the remains of an old football stadium over there. This was a football stadium, looked like, I don't know, from the 1950s or 60s. It had a wall around it. They've taken the wall away, but you can see there's still some bits of it remaining, which make it look pretty cool. And they've turned it into a nice park, which is great. And then it kind of adds on to the park across the road there, which is on the river, on the riverside there, which makes the area kind of a larger park area than it was before, which is really cool. And the stands are still here. Very nice indeed. So this was all grass here before for sport and they've made the new bits fit in perfectly with the old bits there's the old gate over there an old entrance to what was a stadium very nice kind of cute that's great see that's the way you do it you keep as much of the old as you can Maybe sometimes you have to make some slight changes. I noticed on the way in here they built a new stadium on the edge of the town, so they don't need this old one anymore. So they've made it into a nice park. And they've kept the nicest bits, architecturally speaking. Okay, we're out here outside the Savannaket bus station. At this roundabout here. And uh, there's the bus station itself, right in here. We're gonna have a look. The market down there, or there used to be one. Quite a big one. Kind of fresh market. Yeah. Fresh meat, vegetables, and so on. Maybe other stuff. I don't remember so well. But it was, seemed like the biggest one in Savannah Cat. And that road goes towards the downtown, as does that one. And this road goes out towards the Friendship Bridge and the new ish Thai Consulate. Here's the entrance to the bus station. This is where you can get the bus to Thailand. And there's a bus that goes to Vietnam from here and buses that go around Laos. Been here many times.
Well, this is the fairly newish Thailand consulate and uh, I was told, well okay not told, but from the internet it says it opens at 2 in the afternoon for picking up passports, but it looks like it's open already. It's about quarter past one. On the front gate there next to the guard booth it has, it has different times for openings in the mornings and the afternoons, but yeah you cannot really trust the times. It opened at 9 a.m. the other day. So over here you can get photocopies. So that's it. I'm heading back across the border. I'm gonna grab my passport. See you guys next time. Yeah.